Welcome to the show and welcome to the new year. I'm your host, Ellie in Space, and this is your Space News Roundup. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. SpaceX is eyeing an even crazier year in terms of launches. SpaceX absolutely annihilated the record for launches in a calendar year by a single rocket type. Engines full power and lift off of Earth 5.1. Of course, we're talking about the lovely Falcon 9. And hey, check out my new shirt, courtesy of my sister for Christmas. Falcon 9 launched 60 times in 2022, and that was just barely making it with an end of the year launch. But in 2023, SpaceX wants to break that record launch cadence again. And guess what? They're planning 100 launches, almost double what we saw in 2022, which was already pretty spectacular. And of course, in 2023, we hope the successor to Falcon 9, Starship, finally will have its first orbital test flight. But I want to know, will it be Q1, Q2, Q3, or Q4? Leave your guess in the comments below. Could China claim the moon as its own territory? Well, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson thinks it's possible. In a recent interview with Politico, Nelson said Chinese military expansion in the South China Sea is an indicator of what might happen on the moon. Nelson said China could claim the moon as its own territory if it beats the U.S. in a race to the lunar surface. In the interview, Nelson said, quote, it is a fact we're in a space race, and it is true that we better watch out that they don't get a place on the moon under the guise of scientific research. And it is not beyond the realm of possibility that they say, keep out, we're here. This is our territory. He goes on to say, if you doubt that, look at what they're doing with the Spratly Islands. Check out these recently published photos showing new military installations on the Spratly Islands. If you're unfamiliar, this is a disputed archipelago in the South China Sea. So let's compare progress to the moon so far in this new space race. Of course, NASA finally completed its Artemis 1 moon mission, launching SLS in November. And according to their timeline, which again could be off, they're hoping to have astronauts on the lunar surface by 2025. On the other hand, China recently completed its new space station. In November, they also launched a crew of Taikonauts toward their new space station, and Beijing plans to launch three missions to the moon over the next decade as part of their lunar program. Bill Nelson is also quoted saying China has enjoyed enormous success and advances in its space program over the last decade. So I'm going to link that Politico article in the description of this video because it really is a good read. 2023 is already off to a busy start, and I know some of my space friends in the UK are eagerly anticipating the UK UK's first space launch of 2023. Virgin Orbit's UK launch will take off horizontally. So if you're used to watching NASA launches from the launch pad as they launch vertically, this will make you turn your head sideways. But when this launch happens, it's sure to be an iconic moment for the UK space program. The UK has only ever completed one orbital launch, the Black Arrow, in 1971, and that actually took off in Australia. So yes, the UK is bracing for the first space launch in its history this year. As many of you know, we thought it would be in December, but we're hoping it actually is finally in January. And Virgin Orbit will send its launcher one rocket as part of the Start Me Up mission. The rocket will travel thousands of miles up into the air under the wing of a modified Boeing 747. And this adapted plane is named Cosmic Girl. She will take off from Spaceport Cornwall site at the New Quay Airport Cornwall in this horizontal launch. The plane will fly to a predetermined point off of the southwestern tip of Ireland above the Atlantic. The plane will fly in a holding loop until it's time for rocket ignition. Cue a 16 minute countdown and Cosmic Girl will drop the rocket from under its wing and pull safely away. And I wanna turn your attention to someone who plans on covering this launch. In my opinion, he is up and coming in the space community and he is also quite young. Felix Gatfield recently interviewed me for his channel and he's a 14 year old British space journalist. I am editing a full interview that I did with him, but I encourage you to look at his channel and he's never seen a launch and he's hoping Virgin Orbit will be his first. What are you most excited to see in 2023? Um, the two things. Um, the first ever launch from UK soil in Cornwall happening, fingers crossed in January, it was going to happen in the summertime um, in 2022, but they moved it to 
November and to December and now to January. Um, they've got all the approval now, so hopefully that should be happening. I should hopefully I'll be there to watch the launch. That'll be the, my first ever launch um, from Virgin Orbit. And then also the first ever vertical launch um, in Scotland, hopefully happening kind of towards the end of, um, of 2023. So that will be amazing. And fingers crossed I'll be there too. Now keep in mind, he's already interviewed Tim Dodd. He was one of the first journalists to interview uh, some of the crew of Inspiration4, including Jared Isaacman and Haley Arsenault. So yeah, he has some street cred. So I wanted to let you know about his channel and we just love supporting fellow space creators on this channel. So I'm excited for him to see his first launch, fingers crossed. Um, but it is exciting for the UK space program to finally have some action. I told you a few weeks ago about a Japanese lunar lander that was launched on a Falcon 9 rocket. Now we've learned the Hakuto R Mission 1 lunar lander has successfully carried out a second orbital control maneuver. The M1 lunar lander from iSpace is carrying a rover from the United Arab Emirates and a small two-wheeled robot for iSpace. Since the December 11th launch, the lander has maintained stable navigation and it's traveled 1.24 million kilometers from the Earth. And it's scheduled to be at its farthest point of approximately 1.4 million kilometers from the Earth by January 20th. When the lander reaches that point, a third orbital control maneuver may be performed. Once it has navigated deep space for one month, their mission milestone number five will be completed. And keep in mind, they have 10 milestones for success on this mission. Hey, if you're a Starship fan, you are gonna love one of the gifts that I got myself for Christmas. Here's Tony Bella's latest space art collection mini poster book space to the next giant leap now this took a little bit of time to arrive but you guys the quality in this book is absolutely spectacular the book is a sampled collection of concept art and missions that are yet to unfold. And I even got a little shout out on the back cover that I wasn't expecting to see. So thank you, Tony, for including me. This book would be a great addition for your living room coffee table or just a great gift for your fellow space fans. So I will link Tony's book in the description, but I just wanted to share this with you because I've been checking the mail every day, wondering when this is gonna come and it is just so well done. And if you're a fan of Tony's designs, you can actually wear his design and consider ordering yourself a rapid iteration Starship shirt. This has done pretty well so far. I've got really good feedback from you guys that you like this design. Uh, this also comes in a hoodie and a zip up jacket, but I love the design. I've been wearing this and waiting for my hoodie to come, but I will also leave that link in the description. You guys asked me for a better design, so this is SpaceX's mantra of rapid iteration paired with an illustration of various Starship prototypes evolving over time. This one is less girly, and yes, this was some feedback I got and more focused on, well, rockets. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode of your Space News Roundup. Sorry that I've been a little bit MIA. I was celebrating a belated Christmas with my family. So now Christmas is officially over. <laughs> We've had our Christmas and it's time to move on. Time to hit the ground running in the new year. Actually, tomorrow, I don't know why I'm looking at a fake watch. Tomorrow, I'm going to be flying to Las Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Show. Super excited to go to that. Um, I'm actually going to be teaming up with Sandy Monroe and a couple other people that you may be familiar with. So I'm going to be well very busy, but I'm excited to share what I find with you. I've never been to CES. It's funny, my dad has actually been going for, you know, well over 30 years now. So this will be, you know, a bonding moment for us, but also there, uh, there's just so much to see across so many different hotels at CES. This will be a very different experience than the AIAA conference that I went to in October that was limited to one area, right? So I have to make my itinerary and pack and do a bunch of things before tomorrow. But of course, I wanted to get this information out to you. So thank you for waiting on me to release a video. And I will see you in the next one. Like that? No. Necesito asistente. All right.